G'day and welcome back to the garage. In the last episode of the RM250 build, the rear suspension was completed with a complete overhaul of the rear shock and linkages. In this episode, we'll tackle some of the bike controls and fittings. Let's get started. Although plenty of money has been spent on parts in this build so far, there's a couple of simple items that I just couldn't justify buying new, and that's the chain guide rollers. They're about 50 Australian dollars each to buy, but I thought I could make the exact same thing for next to nothing. So after some rough measurements and a basic sketch, that's exactly what I did. On reflection, the cost of buying these parts new is only about 1% of the total build cost. But sometimes there's a lot of value in making something yourself. These are the original foot pegs, and while they might look average, they are actually in pretty good condition. So after some bending and bashing back into shape, and then some new yellow paint, they'll be reused. With some paint left in the gun from the foot pegs, unfortunately it's time to address something that happened a while back.
Luckily there was only a small amount of paint damage that was easily repaired. I was just thankful those new radiators escaped without damage. For two months that has been on my mind, so it's a relief to have it repaired. A good lesson learned. And with that completed, it's time to move on to the controls of the bike, starting with the gear shift lever. And on the other side, the brake pedal is made up of all new parts, replacing the original which was damaged. Before the handlebars can be fitted, the clamps and fittings need to be restored. The alloy clamps have been hydro blasted, and the fittings were firstly sandblasted, and then painted and plated, and then the whole lot was assembled and new handlebars fitted. I've fitted new aftermarket bars to the bike, which look completely out of place with this bar pad. Luckily, I was able to find something more period correct, which suits the bike a lot more. And with the handlebars fitted, the throttle and clutch assemblies can be restored and installed.
Now I'm not sure how I missed this, but I don't have a spring or a needle for this carb. However, I do have a spare assembly from a YZ250, but the needle is something strange and I could never get that bike running right with this carb. Parts are hard to get for these carbs, so I'm gonna come up with another solution in a future episode. So here I purchased a new genuine clutch lever, which doesn't fit the perch that was on the bike, so it must be from something else. And you can't buy a new perch alone, you have to buy the whole assembly. Well, at least I'll have a spare lever I guess. With the clutch lever installed, the left hand grip can go on. And to make this job easier, I've used a decal application fluid, which leaves no residue, but you can use basic soapy water to achieve the exact same thing. And finally, the new kill switch is installed and plugged in. And with that, that's the last of the controls fitted. Make sure you keep an eye out for the next episode of the RM250 build. Thanks for watching, see you next time.